Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Capel. How you are, sir? How are you? Doing better by the minute, by golly. Me too, Jesus. Better by the minute, so. Yep, yep. For all y'all who would normally <coughs> be writing in, and of course it won't be coming on for several more minutes, but I whoops. Got a caller. Let's turn that off. He's going he's gonna to turn that off. So this one's pre-recorded. <clears throat> I'll, I'll put a note up so everybody knows that. Don't write in, just enjoy. Right? Yep. And we're going to, we have a special guest here. We, we, we're visited by the real McCoy. We'll show you all the real McCoy here in just a little bit. What type of McCoy? So, if you haven't seen the notices already, we've got on March 11th, we're going to go ahead and redo our uh, pro sports event. We're going to make it a little bit different. In order to have properly trained agitators and properly trained judges, we're going to turn the 11th into a, well, and we call it a clinic. In the dog world, they call it a seminar. Uh, <laughs> The real McCoy just spotted the, the abandoned wasp. Get a picture of that, Carolyn. Can you get it over there? Yes, hold on. Hold on, folks. We're going to give you a treat you normally don't ever get to see. Talk about prey drive. That dog just noticed we have a wasp nest. It's been up there since we bought this old trailer. And he just saw it. Come here, Mac. What is this? What is it? What is it? What is it up here? What is it up there? Huh? What is it up there? What is it? Yeah, yeah. That's prey drive. He just spotted he just spotted a wasp nest with nothing in it, but he knows it's a wasp nest and he got up where he was and went over there and was climbing the wall while she was while I was yakking. So that's that's Mr. Sin Mr. And Mrs. Sinclair's little Western Shepherd named the real McCoy. <clears throat> you will see him on March the eleventh. He'll be competing. And to that end, I guess we ought to get back to business, huh? Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a seminar. If you've ever wondered about what judges look for, look at, if you've ever wondered what qualified judges <laughs> look for and look at, not your best buddy who you got to hire to judge your club's uh, okay. trial, um, then that's the purpose of the March 11th deal. We're going to show people who are wanting to learn about judging dog shows and, and what we're going to show is going to apply to almost any form. Obedience, uh, agility, to a, well agility is more timed, mm -hmm. uh, but any of these things. And then the biggie that may interest uh, even more people is agitation. And this is where Scott's going to, this will be more or less his department, the there's a big difference between the way we work dogs on the street mm -hmm. and the way we work dogs uh, the, the way the way you would for a sport, right? Yes. What's the biggest difference that you see, Scott? Yeah. Right, so working the dogs, mm -hmm. uh, the bite all together, techniques on catching them, which is the same basically, but you got related to the difference in the dog's bite on and how he reacts, how he outs, how the dog works, how you work the dog to make the dog work as a street dog, not just as a pushing to the bite and all that good stuff. You know, we'll get into details on that, but it's just different techniques in biting. Mm -hmm. and, and of course... And, it, it's, and it's, not, it's not always the same. Right. Every, and, dog is, every dog doesn't bite the same. Right. In sport, you're always catching the same. You're judging on the depth of the bite, you know, and, you know, that's... How, Dog opens his mouth. The depth, of, the depth of the bite. Everything else we do is that too, but it's always the same. Same target. You know, they're the same target. There's, there's <clears throat> different techniques. You know, when you're running off the dogs and mm -hmm. you're in the tent, clocking, clocking off. Right. Barking a hole. We don't do none of that. So you know. No. It's just different techniques and different biting style altogether. Yeah, yeah and, it, and it's like Scott said. It's <clears throat> of course you're going to be working in a suit, which is a little different, but. We're not targeting the same spot, same spot, same spot, same spot, same spot. So, how are you sure uh, when the dog's coming at you, since you haven't taught him to target a specific spot, how do you know that he's biting the spot that you won't bit, like the spot that's covered the best, and not the spot 
where your crotch is. You know, how do you, yeah. how do you make sure he's, and so these are all the things we'll address. And then after the dog, after the bite, in all sports, once the dog has bitten and shown that he's going to stick the bite, they may out him, but that's when it's over, right? Yeah. Schutzen, bite, drive, out, right? French ring, leg bite, clatter stick, out. That's it. Okay. On the street and in pro sports, we're going to be looking after the initial engagement we're looking to see how much the dog can control the man's movements. So there's what we call the fighting styles that are introduced. And this is going to be the same in, this is what every dog should do that's in law enforcement should be doing anyway. It's just not for the, not the civilians don't do much of it because their foundation, most of their training for civilian dogs comes from sport. Mm -hmm. So, Let's, let's, I'm going to define the difference between law enforcement dogs and civilian security dogs. And then you can consider in your own mind, if you know, how those two compare to a sport dog. All right? So in pro sports, we have two divisions. Security division, that's civilian protection dog. And patrol division, that's a law enforcement or military dog. And the... Scenarios, exercises are set up to reflect the jobs of those type of dogs. And so it's different. You can't take a civilian security dog and ask him to work the same way that a police dog would. You got different needs. In both cases, you got potential for yourself being harmed. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure your, your dog is good at doing what he's supposed to do for that particular job. So how do, you, how do we define the difference between a law enforcement dog and a civilian security dog? It's real simple. A law enforcement dog mostly is going, his job is going to be apprehension. He's going to go to a building search. He's going to run down a fleeing suspect. So to that end, in, in, in the pro sports scenarios, all the work is done off leash. A lot of the uh, control work is done from a distance because in law enforcement, that's what the dog's main job is going to be, going after and apprehending someone who's hiding, someone who's fleeing. A civilian security dog, you're not going to be sending your dog out your front door to run somebody down that you don't like because <laughs> you don't like them, right? So their job is mostly going to be to defend someone's already attacked or threatened to attack. They're coming at you, not running away from you. They are defending you. So for that purpose, the, security, the uh, Pro Sports Security Division, all the work is done on leash. There is a courage test where the dog is sent. In the obedience, there is a part where you leave your dog and then walk away and then calling to you. But these are all things that can happen in real life anyway, and they need to be tested, especially the courage test. It needs to be, your dog needs to exhibit the ability to go away from you and do the job. And that brings up another little difference, the out command. So, you wanna take that one or you want me to take it? Go ahead. I mean, huh? Well, for one, uh, I would think it's more for civilians than it is for police dogs. Yep. I know that. <laughs> yeah. That's just the way they're, you know, totally different. Out to a guard, when you're a civilian, uh, you're a civilian dog, something happens, you want your dog to guard also. Yep. Not just take on the bite. Right. Depending, you know. You know, you're not, you're not to apprehend anybody, it's more for defense. Exactly. And how uh, to, uh, how would I say it, to, uh, Immobilize or neutralize the suspect. Neutralize, be good. For protection it. wise. Yeah, yeah. As for uh, police dogs, basically, they go in, bite, and the team comes in and they pull the dog off. Yeah, and, and they're going to pull the dog off in, in a police situation. And, you know, I've heard, I've heard people that think they're hot shot trainers say, well, they can't even out their dogs, you know. Well, yeah, but it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Like I said, that's a different, totally different application. Let's look at the, at the different ways 
uh, that you train a dog to out. The difference between law enforcement, civilians, and, and you can think about the, your sport dogs, although it's not really a factor here. For law enforcement, what, what those officers don't want is the dog releasing and giving that bad guy, we call him, a split second to bolt and flee, to pull a weapon from his belt, uh, to punch somebody, even if he can't do nothing else, to kick somebody. So what they're going to do is have that dog stay on that suspect in the fight until everybody's got there and ideally that person is cuffed and totally immobilized now we can pull the dog off of the man and to that regard you know there's not a lot of reason really to out the dog earlier so they don't concentrate on that as much don't need to really shouldn't you know you don't want to get your dog to release from this guy drop into a barking hole like you do in a Schutzen dog and then have that person get up and, just, and figure out he's got a little Beretta tucked in his belt loop and go bang, bang, bang. So the police dog's going to keep this guy occupied <laughs> <laughs> until everybody can get there and have him completely subdued. Civilian application, totally different. Once in a while, there's been, I've had customers that call me and said, oh, my dog, yada, yada, yada. You have a purse snatcher, you know. You can, you could come in and what's, what, what I have known to happen is someone pulled into their, their, their home after being gone and actually walked in the door when a burglar was in the house and they had their dog with them. And the guy bolted, in this case, the guy bolted out a side door in the garage and then out. And they called me and they said, you know, because their dog was with them and he's going nuts because there's somebody in his house. And, you know, should I send them after him? Well, eh. However, if that person was a purse snatcher or maybe he was a child snatcher, maybe you were at the playground with your kid and he runs up and grabs your kid and takes off running. You're going to send your dog. Now, this is where the out comes in differently for a civilian. Your dog has... <clears throat> Under whatever circumstances you have decided it's right to use your dog to stop this person from escaping or doing further harm. Maybe you just want to keep him at a distance from you. Uh, maybe it's someone kicking your door in as a, like a home invasion. And the minute they kick that door open, you want your dog on whoever may be in the front to scare the others off. You don't need to go up to your, and approach your dog at any time where you've got possible armed bad guys. So what you would do then is if you have a gun, you would uh, go to get your gun while your dog is engaging this person. When you have your gun or if you hide behind a couch, if, if you're not armed, what you can do then is of course, you've already called 911. Have your dog release. And now this is where a bark and hold can, can work. The dog releases and holds that person, that suspect drops into a guard and holds that person stationary until the cops come up. This has happened to at least, I think, well, I know for sure of two pro sports uh, members with certified security dogs, both civilians, and their dogs held the dog, held the, the, the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Cops showed up, took him away. One case in California, you, you know who I'm talking about if you're watching. Um, the cops pulled up and said, wow, I can't believe your dog, little bomber, did that. <laughs> you know, he held, that, he, he held that guy in their garage. Somebody was breaking into their garage to steal a something in their car. Sent their dog out there, dog nailed him. They went out. The husband in this case happened to, had a broke leg and he's walking on crutches, goes out there on crutches and there's this dog releases, goes into a guard. Uh, Pat calls the cops, cops show up and they're real impressed because this little 
Pitbull had held that person at bay in that garage mm -hmm. till they arrived. So you see, we have two different ways to use a dog depending on, and that's why in the pro sports world, we're gonna have <coughs> patrol division and security division. And these are the things that we're gonna go when we, when we do the March 11th trial, we'll go over <clears throat> how to agitate safely and effectively, how to get the most out of the dog's fighting ability. Because what we don't want to do at a trial is bring a dog down. We want a dog, we want every dog to leave the field more successful than he was when he walked in. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Feeling, feeling confident that he did the right thing. So you're going to learn how to get the most out of a dog to teach them how to fight effectively. You're going to learn how to get the most out of a dog to, te to get their obedience or what, well, not for, you, for an agitator, but uh, how, how to get the dog to fight to, to, to the best of his ability to show off to the judges what he's capable of. Then in the obedience portion, of course, that's where our judges are going to have to really earn their money. Mm -hmm. What, what's the difference between healing focused heel and healing on patrol? What do you look for? What's an effective heel? What's an inefficient heel? And these are all the things our judges are going to have to learn right from wrong. Real world versus sport world, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So what else do you think, Mr. Sinclair? Yeah, there's a lot of things in their obedience, you know, uh, like trailing and everything else. And like you said, it's not there to get the dogs to show what the dog did wrong. It's the better the dog and they handle it together as a team. Yeah. And as is for the bite work, same thing. Your team. Yeah, stretch. It's all. It is all about the dogs. But when it comes down to it, y'all are a team. It takes two to tango. Good point. The handler is just as important as a dog is out there. If the handler loses his shit, let's just say that, because I'm going to say it, then the dog's going to don't know what to do. He will, yeah. but he won't know what to do. Control. The leash is very important, umbilical cord. And believe it or not, your dog can feel you with your leash. Especially in the tense situations and putting pressure on dogs, you're also putting pressure on the handlers. And how they both react together is a very good thing. And how to do that properly is another, you know, technique that, you know, you get into when and how and when to put pressure and when not to put pressure. And you know, you're, you're working that dog, but you're also working that handler too, watching what he's doing and yeah. trying to help him the best you can with the abilities he has to make a dog succeed. Right, right. So, and that's a great point. The handler's under, the handler's under more pressure than the dog, because the dog's just doing what he likes to do. You know, really, if you get it good. <coughs> yeah. But uh, here's a classic to, to to define the difference for you even better. I hear this all the time. I heard it in the AKC during obedience. I heard it at UKC shows during obedience. I heard it at uh, Schutzen. I heard it in, I've never done much French ring. Uh, you name it, this is, you'll hear this if you hang around a dog show or dog competitions very often. My dog does better off leash than on leash, therefore can I do it without the leash? Right? Yeah, and it, it's true a lot of times. I've seen people who would enter pro sports and blow it, never do worth a damn in the security division, and then would decide to go and try the patrol division with no leash and win or place, do really well. And of course, being humans, we know it's because we're such geniuses. We did such a wonderful job of training this dog. He does everything without a leash because he loves me. When in truth, and this is only after watching it happen more times than I can count, the reason the dog doesn't do as well in his obedience on leash is because you are nervous, you are pressured, you are not sure of yourself. And like Scott said, they literally feel your emotions through that leash. When you start going, there's a lot of things that I'll tell a handler, you know, this, 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 we're doing this, 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 and this. And that's a lot to take in. Oh, yeah. I mean, season, season handlers, a lot more easy. It's like, it's like, it's like uh, riding a bike. You start riding a bike at training wheels, 
and training wheels come off, one wheel comes off and you get no training wheels and you're riding wheelies and you're riding hand with no handlebars. Yeah. Takes, you got to build it up to a certain point where you know. And you, your dog and you, the more you work together, the more you know each other and the bond builds there. Good point. And all of a sudden the dog will feel you and you'll feel the dog. And you'll have a, a com both of you will grow confidence. And you trust your dog. Yeah, trust your dog. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you build that bond and that's what, you know, a lot of guys train dogs and they don't really take into account the handler. They just work the dog, catch it, show off a bit of a stick. They don't actually, I really like to take the time and put my time to the handlers also. Because I come from there. I started with my dog. I didn't know squat from Disney. And I was nervous and I was, and I learned and learned and I kept getting better and better and we came better and we came better and, you know, it came to a point where I was confident in that dog and the dog had confidence in me and together we were unbeatable. Yep, and the man just told you one of the best tips you're ever going to get. Take each step, build it up. You can't do really well. You're not really a team working your dog off leash if you can't work him on leash. And you're never going to work him on leash until he trusts you, and more importantly, you trust the dog. Yep, because it's off leash is gravy. Oh yeah, it's easy. But that's a bond there too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. you gotta. I figured on the leashes, this is important because you're not always going to be in public off leash for one thing. No, like in the civilian world. That's a good point. You're not going to sit there. Hold on, don't attack me. Let me take my dog <laughs> off the leash real quick. It happens like this. <laughs> Boom. You yep. Know. Yep. And, and the obedience also is on the leash. It's a big deal. It's another, you know, it's part of it. You have to have both sides to make a successful dog. Yep. And that's why Pro Sports, there is an obedience and there is a patrol division, security division, because they go hand in hand. People tell me, well, my dog's too obedient, he ain't going to bite well. well. If he bites too well, he's not going to be obedient. you got to balance it together. It's balance. And build a stronger relationship with a stronger dog. Yep. Period. And, and that is what he said about a dog... That's good obedience, poor bite, good bite, poor obedience. That's a problem that's, that plagues handlers and owners as long as I've been around dogs. And there's only one or two ways to fix the problem, but it's very fixable to bring them both up to the max that your dog can be. And we'll discuss that another time because I think we're about out of it right now. Yeah. So until next week, we're going to be doing more. If you're interested in it. In the seminar, yeah. contact me. Uh, you can go to our webpage, get the phone number, get the information, and it'll be 9, 10, 11, and probably 12 because we'll be recovering from Saturday night. So if you give me a call, if you want to come, if you want to be here. doing anything. Come here. And until that time. Come here. Uh, get over here. Come up here. Up. Remember, folks, it's all about these guys, the dogs. There you go. Okay. We'll see you all next week. See you next week. <laughs>